Uh, I'm Anthony Marnell, and I'm here to talk a little bit about coordinating change here at Alassian. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what uh, change management looks like at Alassian today, give a little bit of context about where we've come from and uh, where, we, where we are right now, a little bit about where we're going. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the specific programs that we have uh, here at Alassian for change, including uh, requests for comments, developer change log, the developer canary program, uh, and to talk about a, a little bit about a new program that we're, uh, we have coming soon. Uh, but first, I want to start with the story. So uh, I live in New York City. Uh, it's my first time in Copenhagen. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, yeah, thinking a lot about uh, the city uh, that I live in. And I've been there for over, over 10 years. Uh, in 1807, New York City was a small settlement on the southern tip of Manhattan. Just a handful of streets uh, that were uh, growing organically as the city was growing. And the city was growing exponentially. There was so much population growth happening. Uh, new neighborhoods were popping up every every few months, and uh, you know people were just uh, were just building things wherever they wanted. They'd be building a well, uh, you know, somewhere. They'd uh, put their waste somewhere else. Uh, they decide to build a new street somewhere that uh, you know nobody nobody gave them permission to do that. It's just kind of growing. And uh, that was causing a lot of problems. Uh, it was causing problems uh, for you know from one neighborhood to the the, the, the other, uh, as people were trying to figure out uh, how uh, this city city worked. Uh, as, you know, directions were, were hard, uh, widths of streets were wrong, and, and it was just causing a lot of pain for the city. And so the city decided to do something about it. They decided to build uh, create a plan on how to. Uh, uh, help the city continue to expand in a more organized, predictable way. And that's not that unlike Atlassian. Uh, you know, just a few years ago, when you kind of thought about Atlassian, you think about some of these major products and some major services that we had, and it was pretty constrained. I mean, if you know, a lot of the uh, partners have been here, I've been here for seven years, a lot of partners have been here for a lot longer. And uh, before, it was, a, it was a simpler time at Atlassian. But now we have many thousands of products and uh, services at Atlassian that are, are being, uh, are, that, that uh, are you know, kind of exist today and that are starting uh, to uh, be built all the time, right? And so this complexity is a big part of, uh, you know, the, the new Atlassian. We also have more people than uh, we ever, we've ever had before. 11,151 employees as of last quarter. That is a significant growth from just uh, seven years ago when I started. It was, uh, last one was like 1,800 people uh, when they acquired Trello seven years ago. And that uh, growth means uh, uh, that the uh, teams that are working on building new products and services at Atlassian are further away from our ecosystem than they ever have been before. There's, uh, you know, we, talk, we heard in the, the talk uh, this morning with Colin, 99% of uh, Atlassian has been here uh, for, um, or he's been here longer than 99% of it last year, right? And so uh, there's uh, uh, more people that are building things at last year all the time and creating change. And so what New York City did about this in the early 1800s was they developed a plan. They started to create some structure and process around how the city would continue to grow. Uh, so, uh, you know, the defining a grid system that, that would specify where the roads would be, how many lots there would be, uh, what the size of those roads would be, and, and really you know, creating that out into the future and giving the, the city a, a, a clear path on how to continue to grow. And so that's what we're building right now. Uh, and on my team, Extensibility Standards, building the standards for teams to follow uh, that fit at lasting scale problems, right? So as this company continues to grow its products and services, as the number of employees continue to expand as well, we we're trying to create ways that Alassians uh, internally know how they should do things. And in a way that uh, just like uh, uh, the, um, the metropolis that is Atlassian, uh, all of the uh, partners and uh, customers can also predictably understand where Atlassian is going because they know how things work. So one of the ways that we do that is through creating both standards and how to build things as well as create programs that uh, help to coordinate that change. So I'm going to talk about some of those programs right now. 
So the first uh, program I want to share uh, is the developer changelog. If you haven't been to uh, developer.elastian.com slash changelog, uh, go to that uh, today and check it out. We launched it about a year ago, um, and it is uh, intended to be the source of changes uh, at Atlassian. And we have a good part of the company already pushing their changes uh, and communicating their changes through changelog. So within the developer changelog, you can see uh, various types of changes that Elastian teams are making. So you can see uh, things that are being removed, you can see deprecation notices, various announcements, uh, certain fixes or certain things that have been added um, are all going to be announced here, right? You can also filter by uh, various components. So you can see just the types of uh, products or services at Elastian that you care about seeing changes about most. And then you can also sub subscribe to changes for those specific filters. Uh, so you can set up your RSS feed, and then you'll get notified anytime there is a change. And, uh, and you can even set that up to notify a Slack channel. If you work at a company, you can just have those, have those uh, changes come right into, your, uh, into a specific channel. And so every time Atlassian does make one of those changes about something you care about, you can see that, and you can prepare for that change or respond to that change, um, which is really helpful. Uh, the other program that we launched about nine months ago is the Request for Comments program, RFCs. Uh, these primarily run through the developer community. Uh, so requests for comments are a way for Atlassian teams to share what they're working on early in the product development cycle uh, so they can share what problem they're trying to solve and what solution that they're proposing. And the goal here is to help uh, our developer community uh, give early feedback on what those uh, plans actually are. So, uh, when we're, uh, we were doing this, we actually, very meta, I know, uh, we created an RFC about RFCs to get feedback. Now, like the, the, the goal here is, is to ensure that our developer communities can help identify serious flaws uh, in our plans, and we can uh, prevent this uh, regrettable uh, change from happening closer to GA. So in the past, what might happen is that a team would be working on something, uh, they kind of, you know, maybe they do, they, they do a little bit of research, but they'd be forging forward on their path, and close to GA, they'd be ready to announce it, and then all of a sudden, everybody's like, W2F, like, why are you doing this? And uh, that team would have to go back to the drawing board and figure out, okay, well, that solution was way wrong, um, like, what, how do we actually uh, fix this? And it would, it's a serious, serious cost of change for Atlassian. Uh, and so we've done 31 RFCs, so about uh, three or four a month uh, that we've been, been doing. And we have a number of teams that have started to adopt us, and, and we're continuing to expand this as the way that teams should be, uh, should be sharing what they're working on early with our partners. Uh, and it was had real results. RFC4, uh, Multi, who's uh, at the conference today, worked on this, uh, had a request for demo feature, and they had this uh, this problem that they identify that uh, d that our partner community wanted to have better lead gen, and they came up with this request for demo feature, and they shared the solution with the partner community. Partner community said that is not what we want, or this is a problem uh, for us for these reasons. Uh, and the uh, the team heard that feedback, and they said, okay, we're going to pause uh, working on this. And we're going to go back to the drawing board with some other solutions. And if we're going to uh, work, continue working on this, we'll come back to you with a, a different RFC with those solutions. And that's exactly the type of outcomes that we're looking for uh, that we, uh, with this program. The next program uh, I want to share is the Developer Canary program. Uh, so Developer Canary program is the way that we roll out changes to our partners' developer instances prior to our customers. So how we do that uh, is that we have a developer assistant app. So this is in the Elastium Marketplace. If you haven't downloaded this, go download it to, uh, today. We have 197 downloads of, of this app so, so far, which is awesome. But really, every developer should have this app installed uh, if they're developing for Jira. And what this does is it helps us identify the instances uh, that we should be rolling out changes to prior to uh, our customers. So, the, uh, when we roll out changes in cloud, they first go to Atlassian's internal instances, then they go to the instances that have this developer assistant app installed, and then they go to our customer's instances. And our hope is, is that if we've missed something, uh, if, like introduced a bug of some sort, 
or we've missed something uh, significant in uh, the impact that change is going to have to our, our, our partners, uh, we're going to catch it before it goes out to our customers. Because the last thing that we want is our customers to be the ones reporting that an app is no longer working for them, right? And that we have to roll back the change uh, then. So our app developers are key, uh, key partners in making sure that their apps stay up uh, and that our, that our uh, customers' instances aren't impacted. And we also have this app for Confluence. So if you're developing Confluence uh, apps, we have a developer assistant app for Confluence that does just the same thing. Now today I'm happy to uh, share uh, that uh, we have one new program that we're going to be adding uh, to this, and this is a partner early access program. So uh, there's various teams at Atlassian today that do early access programs for the features that they're working on. Uh, some of the Forge uh, ecosystem uh, and the marketplace teams are some of the teams that do already do early access. But to do early access at Atlassian today is actually pretty hard. It's manual, uh, it requires a good amount of back and forth with our partners, and, uh, and because of that, uh, it does, more teams at Atlassian aren't doing early access. And that is at the detriment for those Atlassian teams, as well as uh, for our partners. Uh, because we want to see uh, more and more teams collaborate with our partners in what they're building. So the Partner Early Access Program uh, will allow uh, more teams to work on uh, uh, what, or to, to collaborate on what they're working on with our partners. And, and the goal here is to do two things, is to both get the conversation going between the teams that are building the thing and the partners who have the, uh, an interest in, uh, in how that's built, as well as give more control to those partners uh, for, uh, to, to actually activate features on their account and, and uh, take a look at the documentation that we have. And so really trying to reduce uh, the friction for everybody involved to, to do this. And the hope is, is that when we uh, do more early access at Atlassian, we either, even catch more uh, regardable change, uh, as well as help make those features more powerful and impactful for, for our customers. So when we are uh, building something, especially like a new surface uh, that we, uh, we've uh, recently shared that we're working on, uh, and uh, some new extensibility macros, uh, tab formats for Confluence. It's like we can do early access for, for that and ensure that when that feature goes GA for customers, there's great support from our app partners already uh, that make that feature even more valuable. So in the past, where product development uh, might look a little bit like this at Elastian, we'd have an idea, we'd iterate on it, we'd iterate on it, we'd do a developer change log, maybe announcing the change, uh, we'd have an RFC uh, where we'd get some of that uh, significant feedback on that solution. We'd take some of that feedback, we'd iterate a little bit more, we'd make another announcement in the developer change log, uh, and then we'd do the developer canary um, before going to GA. We want it to look a little bit more like this, where we have that partner early access uh, in between when we do uh, the request for comments and when uh, it starts getting rolled out. Uh, and all of that uh, is intended to smooth this transition uh, from idea to GA to ensure that everybody's ready for that change, whatever that is. Maybe it's a deprecation, maybe it's a new feature, but whatever that change is, we, we want to make sure that we uh, have uh, our partners as, uh, uh, as de or our developers as partners through the entire path of making that change. So like New York City, uh, you know, the, had this plan in 1800s to expand the city. Uh, they, uh, that, that plan, uh, they were supposed to be a 100-year plan, and within 10 years, they had already uh, expanded the entire, uh, the entire length of Manhattan and kind of consumed that plan. And so just like New York City kind of became this uh, incredible metropolis as a result of some, some important planning, we hope to see Atlassian continue to grow uh, in a way that is uh, predictable and stable, uh, and uh, and our partners can actually uh, work well within that. And and I don't want to uh, to um, you know like try to try to convince anybody here that the work that we're doing today won't also need to evolve. Like the Atlassian today is not going to be the same as the Atlassian five years from now or fifty years from now. Right? We're going to have to continue to evolve these programs. So some of these programs are really young. They're a year old, nine months old, right? 
And, and they're only going to get better here as we continue to evolve them. And then at some point, they might not be the solution any longer, and we're going to have to replace that, right? But what we do want to uh, uh, communicate here is that we have some of these programs. Uh, we want uh, our developers uh, participating in them. If you do participate in them, you're going to get a lot of value. Uh, and um, and uh, we're going to continue to work on and ensuring that we uh, we kind of create that smooth transition for change for uh, both Alassians and our partners. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, I don't know if we have uh, a couple minutes to, to uh, ask and answer them, but come find me later. I'm Anthony, uh, and I'm happy to, happy to talk to you more about what we're working on. Cheers.